safe within our souls to rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid, and fill the hearts which thou hast made. To thee the comforter we cry, to thee the gift of God most high, the fount of life, the fire of love, the soul's anointing from above. The sevenfold gifts of grace are thine, O finger of the hand divine, true promise of the Father thou, who dost the tongue with speech endow. Thy light to every thought impart, and share thy love in every heart. The weakness of our mortal state with deathless might invigorate. Drive far away our wily foe, and thine abiding peace bestow. If thou be our protecting guide, no evil can our steps be tied. Make thou to us the Father known, teach us the eternal Son to own, and thee whose name we ever bless, of both the Spirit to confess. Praise we the Father and the Son, and Holy Ghost with them one, and may the Son on us bestow the gifts that from the Spirit flow. Amen. Send forth thy Spirit, and they shall be made, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Ghost, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify thee, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Give sentence with me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people. O deliver me from the deceitful and wicked man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why hast thou put me from thee? And why do I so heavily, while the enemy oppresseth me? O send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me, and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. And that I may go unto the altar of God, even unto the God of my joy and gladness. And upon the harp will I give thanks unto thee, O God, my God. Why art thou so heavy, O my soul, and why art thou so disquieted within me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, which is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God even unto the God of my joy and gladness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father.
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Confess unto the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endureth forever. I confess to God, to blessed Mary, to all the saints, and to you that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed through my fault. I pray, Holy Mary, all the saints of God and you to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon me and forgive thee all thy sins, deliver thee from all evil, preserve and strengthen thee in goodness, and bring thee to everlasting life. Amen. I confess to God, to blessed Mary, to all the saints, and to thee, Father, that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, word, and deed through my fault. I pray, Holy Mary, all the saints of God, and thee, Father, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon you and forgive you all your sins, deliver you from all evil, preserve and strengthen you in goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, time for true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth, now and forevermore. Let us pray. Receive the kiss of peace and love, that you may be fit for the holy altar, for the performance of divine offices. Thou shalt purge me, O Lord, with his up, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Have mercy upon me, O God, after thy great goodness. Thou shalt purge me. O Lord, with his up, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. According to thy multitude of thy mercies, do away mine offences. Thou shalt purge me. O Lord, with his up, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Graciously hear us, O Lord, Father Almighty, everlasting God, and vouchsafe to send thy holy angel from heaven to guard and cherish, to protect and visit, and to defend all who dwell in this holy habitation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
be ye charitable unto me, and have mercy on me, for I am only begotten and poor. Look upon my humbleness and my hardship, I and forgive all my sins. Unto thee, O Lord, have I lifted up my soul. My God, I have put my trust in thee, but let me never be confounded. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Be charitable unto me, and have mercy on me, for I am only begotten and poor. Look upon my humbleness and my hardship, and forgive all my sins. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and in a peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only O Christ with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech, <coughs> O Lord, who never failest to govern them whom thou dost bring up in thy steadfast love, make us have alike a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who has given unto us thy servants grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity, and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. We beseech thee that thou wouldst keep us steadfast in this faith, and evermore defend us from all adversities. Who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O Lord, most
mercifully hear the prayers of thy church, that she, being delivered from all manner of adversity and error, may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A lesson from the first epistle of St. John. Dearly beloved, marvel not if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death into life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowel of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God, and whatsoever we ask we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he is abideth in us, by the Spirit which he has given us. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. O cast thy care upon the Lord, and he shall nourish thee. He shall hear my voice, he will deliver my soul in peace from them that draw nigh against me. Lord, give me a blessing, and Lord, be my heart and mouth, that I may speak the holy gospel of God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. strong and patient, and inflicteth not vengeance every day. Alleluia, Alleluia. be with you and with thy spirit the continuation of the holy gospel according to saint luke glory be to thee o lord
At that time Jesus spake this parable unto his disciples. A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have brought I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came, and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go and quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Through the words of the Gospel may our sins be blotted out. warm this morning and very muggy um, to be blessed in. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today Jesus tells us a story about the invitation to a dinner party. You and I have been invited probably many times to dinner parties and we know that an invitation to dinner is something that we accept not only to fill ourselves with all kinds of food and nourishment, even though that does happen, but there is something more to the acceptance of the invitation. There is a bond that is established between the host and guest. It is really for this purpose that we, should, that we would have dinner and guests for dinner, to share the intimacy of the family with the guest. It is a time for great joy and happiness. I will tell you a story, a little story about myself, that happened some time back, and it's very embarrassing. No giggles. As a young monk, I was invited to dinner to a family's house. Before dinner, we were talking over a small gin and tonic about many things, including various kinds of food. And as you can see, I like just about anything and everything. But I said, there's one thing that I don't like, and that's celery. I just don't like it. I can't. Oh, it's awful. Not nice. Saying all of this to the couple beforehand, what do you think was in the meal that night? Celery gratin. I felt like an absolute fool. There was a lot of backing and filling, if you can imagine, in my conversation after that. Such statements, so, this is really good. If I knew that celery tasted like this, I'd have been a younger convert. I don't think they believed a word of it, but I still don't like celery. However, I didn't go there to, to that house to eat celery or anything else just to fill my stomach. I did it because they had invited me to share the intimacy of their family. That was most important, not whether or not the celery was tasty for me. Because you and I understand what a dinner invitation is really about, Jesus used an example. So after he tried to teach us about the intimacy which God desires in his family, how often Jesus couches this term, this teaching term, of a shared meal together. Look at the different times that Jesus used a meal as a setting for teaching during his lifetime. He worked his first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana at a meal. He also did some teaching and criticising of Simon the Pharisee, 
about the behaviour one should display in this new kingdom that he had come to establish. Jesus shared with his disciples the night before he died and was that most important on his mind before he would leave them. It's five chapters in St. John's Gospel. And of course, at that same meal, he gave us his own body and blood as our food. After the resurrection, he appeared as his, to his disciples at a meal in the upper room. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus came to know him in the breaking of the bread. Over and over again, there was this setting of a shared meal. It is no wonder that Jesus would also use such a setting in his parables as he does today. There is a parallel story that you are familiar with in St. Matthew's Gospel. There was a king who gave a banquet for his son, and he sent out invitations. When all of the invited people failed to show, they were excluded. Then he brought in anybody he could find from the highways and hedges to fill the hall. There was also the added detail in St. Matthew's Gospel about the man who wasn't wearing a wedding garment. But St. Luke's story, our Gospel reading this morning, is much simpler. This was just a man who was giving a dinner party, and he invited many. The excuses that they came up with are absolutely beyond belief. Well, I just bought some land and I've got to go and see it. <laughs> I suppose that individual was so consumed with the accumulation of things that he didn't really have time for the intimacy between himself and his Lord. And then there is the next individual. What a weak excuse that was. I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I've got to go out and try them out. I'd rather be lying rocky round than eating a meal with you, is what he was saying. And the third excuse I always thought was the, the, the poorest of all the excuses. But that individual at least could fall back on the word of God because he was using something that was in the law of Moses to excuse himself. You will find it in the 24th chapter in the, in the book of Deuteronomy. And I think it's rather humorous. When a man is newlywed, he need not go out on a military expedition, nor shall any public duty be imposed on him uh, like a dinner. He should be exempt for one year for the sake of his new family, to bring joy to the wife he has married. At least he has a better excuse than the others. Each one of them had spurned the invitation to intimacy. When St. Luke gave us a parable, he had something much broader in mind. The people who were invited were the Jews. They had rejected the Messiah, the invitation to immense intimacy with God himself. Now the invitation was sent out to anybody and everybody. Jesus teaches us that his church, his kingdom, is not an exclusive club. Rather, he came in order to invite all of humankind to accept this message of salvation. I find it interesting to hear the kinds of people that the Master says should be collected. He says, go out and find the blind, the beggars, the lame, all the people that are on the, the dregs of society. Get them all in here. I want a full house. All the outcasts you can find. Truly, what is what that is what he was saying. You know that you and I have to identify not with those people that rejected the invitation, but with the second group collected from the streets and hedge bottoms. How many times we are really blind to God's teaching. We can't see the woods for the tree. We can't see the love of God that surrounds us. We're so blind. We're lame too. We're crippled by our sins that we repeat so often that they become part of us. And that crippling effect over a period of time leaves us in such a weakened state. We are beggars for we know our poverty. The poverty of our own spirits without God. There isn't much there until God fills it with himself. The banquet that you and I have been invited to this morning is a very special one. Here we are collected from all kinds of places, assembled online watching in this little chapel, in order that you and I might share a special kind of intimacy with our Lord and God. What a privilege it is. Here at this time we must do the most important thing that we could ever do in this week. First of all, we are privileged to offer ourselves. 
all of that we are and have, body and soul, to God our Father, through and with Christ our Lord. But I am also privileged to receive in my hands the Lord of the universe under such simple appearances. Here is the God-made man, come to earth wrapped in swaddling clothes as a baby. Here is the healer, that if I could touch but the hem of his garment, I would be healed. And here he is in my hand, here is the one who hung upon a tree in order to give us eternal life. Here is the one who rose from the dead in order that we can confront death and know that it isn't the end of things, but the beginning of eternal life. What a gift our God has given to us. Talk about the intimacy of an invitation to dinner. How much more intimate could our God be with us than to become one with us as our food? Not only that, but one with another in this food. For one bread makes us one body in Christ. Christ our Lord is not divided at communion time. It isn't one Christ one for one person, another Christ for another, and another Christ for someone in Ireland, and Christ for one in Australia, and one in, Eng one, one in New England, one in, one in America, one in France, one in Germany. No. It is the same Christ our Lord that each and every one of us outside of COVID-19 receives at Holy Mass. Are we one with them? Yes, we are. This is the communion of saints. Is there anything that we could possibly do that would be more important than to accept this invitation, to follow this mandate of Jesus Christ our Lord at the first Eucharist, when he said to his disciples, do this in memory of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. And let them that know thy name be that put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, have never forsaken them that seek thee. O oh, praise the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Proclaim his doings among the nations. Receive the Holy Trinity's oblation, which I am worthy sinner, offering thy honour, blessed Mary, and all thy saints for my sins and offences, for the salvation of the living and the repose of all the faith of the departed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, let this new sacrifice be acceptable to Almighty God.
and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Pray, brethren and sisters, for me, that my and your sacrifice may alike be accepted by the Lord our God. The grace of the Holy Ghost illumine my heart and lips, and the Lord graciously accept the sacrifice of praise at my hands for our sins and offences. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, just, and for our salvation that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who with thine only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost art one God, art one Lord. Not one only person, but three persons in one substance. For that which we believe of thy glory, which thou hast revealed the same, do we believe of thy Son, and of the Holy Ghost without difference, or inequality, that in the confession of a true and everlasting Godhead, both distinction in the persons and unity, in being and equality, in majesty, be worshipped. Which angels and archangels praise, cherubim also and seraphim, who cease not to cry with one voice, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, we most humbly pray and entreat to accept and bless these gifts, these presents, this holy immaculate sacrifice, which we offer unto thee in the first place in behalf of thy holy Catholic Church, to which do thou deign to give peace to God, to unite, to govern it throughout the whole world. Together with thy servants Francis our Pope, Damien our Bishop, Elizabeth our Queen, all the Orthodox and maintainers of the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, thy servants and thy handmaidens. And all here present, whose faith is approved and whose devotion is known to thee, in whose behalf we offer unto thee, or engage in offering unto thee this sacrifice of praise for themselves and for all pertaining to them, 
for the redemption of their souls and for the hope of their own salvation and security and are paying their vows unto thee the eternal living and true god in communion and reverencing the memory in the first place of the glorious and ever virgin mary mother of our god and lord jesus christ as also are thy blessed apostles and martyrs peter and paul Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christoconus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all thy saints. For whose sake and prayers grant that in all things we may be strengthened by the aid of thy protection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. This oblation, therefore, of our service and that of thy whole family. We beseech thee, O Lord, to graciously to accept and dispose our days in thy peace, delivering us from eternal damnation and causing us to be numbered amongst the flock of thine elect. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Which oblation we beseech thee, O Almighty God, that thou wouldst vouchsafe in all respects to bless, approve, ratify, and make reasonable and acceptable that it may become to us the body and the blood of thy most dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who on the day before he suffered, took bread into his holy and adorable hands, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, and to thee his Father God Almighty, gave thanks to thee, blessed the break, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat ye all of this, for this is my body. Likewise, after supper, taking also this most excellent chalice into his holy and adorable hands, and giving thanks to thee, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it, for this is the cup of my blood of the new and everlasting testament, the mystery of faith which shall be shared for you and for many for the remission of sins. As oft as you shall do these things, you shall do them in remembrance of me. Wherefore also, O Lord, we thy servants, together with thy holy people, call into mind the most blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord God, together with his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven. Offer to thy most excellent majesty of thy gifts and bounties a pure, a holy, a spotless sacrifice, the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation. Upon which do thou vouchsafe to look with favourable and gracious countenance, and accept them as thou didst accept the gifts of thy righteous servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice with the pure oblation which thy high priest Melchizedek offered to thee. We humbly entreat the Almighty God, command these things to be carried by the hands of thy holy angel to thy altar on high, before the sight of thy divine majesty, that as many of us as shall be partaking at this altar, receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all grace and heavenly benediction. 
Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, the souls of thy servants and handmaidens. Who have gone before us with a sign of faith and sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we pray thee, grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. To us also, thy sinful servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, vouchsafe to grant some part and fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints, into whose company not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, we beseech thee to admit us through Christ our Lord, by whom, O Lord, thou ever createst, sanctifiest, quickenest, blessest, and bestowest upon all these good things. By him, and with him, and in him, is unto thee, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Admonished by saving precepts and directed by divine institution, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we beseech thee from all evils past, present, and to come. And at the intercession of the blessed and glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul and Andrew, with all saints, graciously give peace in our time, that aided by the help of thy loving kindness, we may both be ever set free from sin and secure from all disquietude. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee liveth and reigneth in the unity of the Holy Ghost God, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Let this most holy union of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be to me and all who receive it held of mind and body in the saving preparation of worldly attaining to eternal life. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, grant me so, so worthily to receive this most holy body and blood of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that I may thereby receive forgiveness of all my sins and be filled with thy Holy Ghost and have thy peace. For thou only art God, and there is no other beside thee, 
whose kingdom and glorious dominion abideth forever, world without end. Peace be unto thee, and to the church of God, and with thy spirit. O God, the Father, fountain source of all goodness, who moved by thy loving kindness this will, thine only begotten, to descend for us to this lower world and to take flesh, which I unworthy here hold in my hands. I worship thee, I glorify thee, I praise thee. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, live us and reign as God, world without end. Amen. forevermore most holy flesh of Christ to me before all and above all the highest source of joy the body of our Lord Jesus Christ be unto me a sinner the way and the life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen <coughs> Hail forevermore heavenly drink to me before all above all this highest source of joy the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be unto me a perpetual healing and everlasting life in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who has refreshed me with the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that this sacrament of our salvation, of which I am worthy sinner, have partaken, turn not to judgment nor condemnation according to my deserts, but be profitable to the preservation of my body and soul and everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my life. Truly say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof. Truly say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter into my roof. Truly say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As thou, as though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. soul and everlasting life. Amen.
have partaken of with our mouth the Lord may we receive with a pure heart my temporal gift and everlasting healing be effected. Let this communion the Lord cleanse us from sin and make us partakers of heavenly healing. Let us adore the sign of the cross, whereby we have received the sacrament of salvation. I will sing unto the Lord who hath dealt so lovingly with me. I will chant unto the name of the Lord Most High. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. <clears throat> Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee that we who have received thy holy gift may, whilst we attend the mystery, more freshly work out our salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the receiving of this sacrament, O Lord, our God, and the confession of the everlasting Holy Trinity, and of the undivided unity of the same, be profitable to us for the salvation of body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our God, we beseech thee, suffer not those to fall into the perils of this life, whom thou dost permit to rejoice in the partaking of heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Depart. Ye the mass is over. Thanks be to God. Let the beaten performance of my family and Jesus be seen to the Holy Trinity. In claim of the sacrifice which I have heard of the Lamb of God and the sight of the Lamb must be made the expectation. 
that God has given me. And may it is a mercy you obtain, I pray, for my soul and all those in whose behalf I suffer them. And it is from his cause that I am about to end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Lord, save thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and hear us when we call upon thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that thy servant, our Queen Elizabeth, who by thy mercy has undertaken the government of this realm, may receive increase of all the virtues fit adornment for a Queen, enabling her to shun all foul temptations, overcome her enemies, and with, with the royal family be welcomed at the last by thee, who art the way, the truth, and the life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Almighty and Most Merciful Father, who by the childbearing of Blessed Mary of a Virgin has revenged our ruin and by the ministry of thy holy angels, dost ever succour and defend us. Keep, we beseech thee, our diocese under thy continual help and protection, that we, ever needful of thy grace, may bring forth for thee the fruit of good works and the harvest of souls through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us sing the song of the three children. O ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. O ye humble and holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. O Ananias, Azarias, and Mizar, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son with the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with a psaltery and harp. 
Praise him with a timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us sing the song of the three children, which they sang in the furnace of fire, and give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, our Father. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us bless the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, and to be praised and exalted forever. The Holy Trinity bless and keep us. Amen. Enter not into judgment with thy servant, O Lord, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. Turn us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who for the three children has quenched the flames of fire, mercifully grant that we, thy servants, may not be consumed by the flames of our sins. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindle in our reins and in our hearts, O Lord, the fire of the Holy Ghost, that we may serve thee with a chaste body and please thee with a pure heart. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prevent us, O Lord, we beseech thee in all our doings with thy favour, and further us with thy help, that all, in, that all our works may be begun, continued, and ended in thee. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. May, all, may, my, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.